Good evening. You're very welcome to this, the seventh webinar in the series from myself and my colleagues here in Chagas, Sligo, Leitrim, Donegal. My name is Kean Condon. I'm a dry stock advisor based in Manor Hamilton in the County of Leitrim, and I'll be your host here this evening. Uh, tonight, the focus moves on to uh, farm schemes and an update on those schemes. And following the announcement by Minister McConnell last week, um, tonight is a very important webinar about the rollover of those schemes into 2021. Tonight, my colleagues Brendan Caslan and Paul Martin, both of the Ballymote office, will be going over the important information with regard to these schemes and what you need to, to do to ensure you meet the requirements. Um, since we can't meet face to face, as usual, uh, with meetings, farm walks and seminars, we're hoping to keep things pretty interactive. And at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a question and answer function. And you can send your questions in right throughout this evening's session, and I'll put them to our panel at the end. So without any further ado, I will call on uh, Brendan. I can see Brendan on screen there. So Brendan, if you want to go ahead and share your screen and we'll begin. Um, so just to introduce myself, firstly, I'm Brendan Caslan, dry stock uh, advisor here based in Chagas in Ballymote in Sligo. So a kind of an overview of my presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about three different topics tonight. Uh, the beef exceptional aid measure, which is better known as the BEAM scheme organic farming scheme and the glass scheme, which is very uh, topical now the last few days, and I'll go through that in a few minutes. Um, so to start with the beef exceptional aid measure scheme. So the purpose of the beam scheme, the reason it was brought in in the first place is to partially compensate Irish beef farmers uh, for a significant loss in output value arising from market disturbance in the past. Um, just a, a kind of a recap on the rules and regulations. Um, each participant must be a member of a Borbia quality assurance scheme uh, or a department environmental scheme. And that would have encompassed BDGP, which Paul is going to talk about in the second half of the presentation, BEEP, OFS, which is the organic farming scheme and GLOSS, any of them. And the second part, which is quite topical, is the reduction in the production of bovine livestock manure nitrogen, the total figure per head, by 5% for a target period from the 1st of July 2020 to the 30th of June 2021, compared to what we call a reference period of, of the past of the 1st of July 2018 to the 30th of June 2019. I'll have a few examples further on and will help explain the case. So um, just to recap on payment rates, the aid paid on adult cattle slaughtered um, between the 24th of September 18 and the 12th of May 19. They're, those are the important dates. And at a rate of 100 euro per animal subject to a maximum of 100 finished animals per herd. Uh, and for the suckler cow farmers, we'll say the aid paid on suckler cows uh, were cows that calved in 2018 at a rate of 40 euro per animal, subject to a max of 40 suckler cows per herd. And the other important thing is there was no linear reduction. So um, the full payments apply. So um, just to get into the basics of the scheme, um, nitrogen based on total bovine nitrogen in the herd. It's not based on nitrogen per hectare and renting of extra land or exporting of slurry are not options to dilute down uh, your nitrogen value. The actual reductions in stock numbers is all based on bovines or cattle um, or earlier sale or finishing of stock will be required to meet the 5% reduction. So anybody with sheep, even if you cut down 100 joes or 200 joes, it has no effect on this. It's a reduction of actual bovines or cattle. Um, the Department of Agriculture issued information letters to farmers in December of 2019. All of the farmers on the call tonight would, uh, would have got them around this time last year, which included figures for the reference nitrates kilos and also the figure for the 95% of the reference value. So there was about three or four pages in the letter and it quoted each individual farmer's um, reference nitrates. Everyone is different from farm to farm and also what the 5% reduction would mean. If the targeted reduction is not met within the reference period, um, monies will be recouped by the department into the future. So it's just, it's a kind of an important point and um, farmers have already been paid this and no farmer uh, will want to give back this payment. So we'd encourage anyone, if you can, um, to try and reduce your numbers if possible by the 5% um, to hold on to this payment. If you're happy enough to 
sort of forego the payment, that's up to you, but that's, uh, it'd be a shame to lose the payment. The payments commenced at the end of 2019. And what I've done here now is I kind of did up a bit of a 10 step guide to beam just to go through it. So it's important that you check what is a 5% bovine livestock manure uh, nitrogen reduction for your herd for the reference period from the 1st of July 18 to the 30th of June 2019. So it, it confuses farmers a little bit in that it's two halves of two years. All right. So check what your current organic nitrogen for your herd is now. And I'll go through um, a bit on ICBF and a bit on the department website and kind of ways of figuring out what you have currently at the moment. Know how many kilograms of organic nitrogen you need to decrease by from the 1st of July 20 to the 30th of June 2021. So it's just important to have these figures in your head that you can plan um, to ideally not lose the payment you've already received. So point four there. Um, the reduction cannot be made by exporting of slurry or by claiming additional land to offset the figure. So um, no exporting slurry, no claim an extra land to dilute it. Now point five there, the nitrogen excretion values are calculated as a daily figure. So every day you hold on to livestock, it is, it is included in your amount and sheep are not included. So it might not seem like a lot, but we'll say every extra week that you have, we'll say 10 or 12 Waylands on the farm or stores or whatever, does add up and it can affect it, it, it can affect your 5%. It might mean the difference between being just under the 5% and just over the 5%, just bear it in mind. Um, point six, so uh, to understand how much each animal on your farm contributes to your total bovine livestock manure nitrogen. So. Every animal has a value, uh, nitrogen value per year. So we start at the high value, which is dairy cows and um, farmers with under 40 dairy cows were eligible and there are some dairy farmers in this scheme. So 85%, 85 kilos for a full beam scheme year. Um, now that is slightly different. You uh, must take into account from the nitrates where the value of the dairy cow will increase to 89 kilos from the 1st of January on, but we've been told by the Department of Agriculture that it will be 85 kilos for the beam scheme year, which runs right on to the 30th of June of next year. Um, moving down, the, the suckler cows are valued at 65 kilos. Cattle not to one year old, so anything from your sucky calf up to 365 uh, days is uh, 24 kilos. Your stores or your replacement heifers or store bullocks, whatever, one to two year olds are 57 kilos. And any heavy cattle or we'll say in calf heifers are 65 kilos as well, the same as the suckler cow. So point seven there, one way to achieve the reduction is to reduce stocking levels, but reductions can also be achieved through the restructuring of your herd. Um, you'll see it in the press about uh, suckler farmers having to cut down cows and this sort of stuff. You don't actually have to, it, you can do it if you want, or you can cut down on young stock, but you don't have to cut down on suckler cows. You can if you want to. It is important to take action early for the full period of the 1st of July 2020 to the 30th of June 2021. Um, farmers who take action later in the period will have to make greater adjustments to their stock to meet the requirements. So we're nearly halfway through now when we come towards the end of the year. So a lot of farmers that I talk to now and clients that come into me um, have already started this and have, would have started in July. But if you haven't anything done now, all is not lost. And I'll go through a few examples. Um, Point nine there, possible options for your farm to meet the reduction are, it could be a case of, and what a lot of farmers have done, is scan cows that bit earlier, detect any empty cows for culling, uh, maybe older cows, whatever that you, what you're thinking of getting rid of, selling any cow that's a health and safety risk on your farm. If she's rough, if she's wild at calving, no excuse, gone. Um, don't put yourself at risk or your family at risk with wild cattle, we'll say. Um, Selling stock earlier than normal is another option. So you might be in the habit of selling, we'll say, strong winlands that will say 10, 11, 12 months. It might be a case of selling some of them at eight, nine months. Um, selecting heavier stock to finish sooner. Um, there's been a great trade for heavy cattle, we'll say, in the marts for going north. The northern buyers are very keen to buy them. So they've bought a lot of uh, forward store uh, suckler cows that would have been fed on farm. So they can be gone earlier. 
or some farmers that would have finished uh, bullocks or heifers right through to slaughter and um, took the, the opportunity to um, sell them in the mart and get rid of them. Um, and, you know, trade is, has been very good. Um, the tenth point on that is, it's important to note that if a farmer makes no reduction of the reference figure by the 1st of January 2021, then the reduction from the 1st of January 2021 to the 30th of June 2021 must be 10% of the reference figure. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, what I'm really saying there is if you make no change because it's a 5% across the full 12 months, if you do nothing for the first six months, it will be a 10% reduction in the second six months. Um, so that will affect some people. Um, I've put up a few examples here just to kind of make it a little bit more practical. So typical situations that come into us here in the Chagas office here in Ballymote will say you have a suckler farmer that has 25 suckler cows, for example, excuse me, and 25 calves to be sold at 12 months. That's the normal system. When you tot up the figures there, we'll say the 24 kilos for the calves by 25 and the 65 kilos uh, multiplied by 25 for the suckler cows, you get a total nitrogen uh, figure for this farmer of 2,225 kilos. So you might ask me, what on earth is that? You reduce that by 5% and the reduction required is 111 kilos of nitrogen, right? So um, there's two options there. We'll, the several options, but two of the options I put up is reduce your suckler cow numbers by two, which is two by 65 is 130. Uh, now, the important point to note is that's over the average of the full 12 month period, right? So if you didn't do anything for the first six months, it'll be four for 12 months or for six months. The second option there, and it's uh, basically a case of reducing suckler cow numbers by one, which is 65 kilos, again over the full 12 month period, and sell maybe four calves at six months rather than 12 months. So it's in the power of each farmer as to which way they want to do it. They're not being forced to do it in any particular way. It's up to you. It's your choice. A second um, um, example here now is a holding with 70 one to two year olds. So a typical farmer buying in store bullocks or store heifers or even bull beef has a nitrogen value of 3,990 kilos for the year. So 5% reduction of that just multiplied by 95% um, requires a, a reduction of 200 kilos of nitrates. So that simply when you're dealing with one to two year olds, it's a simpler system. It's a reduction of four. So it's four by 57, which is 228. So that's another example there. The holding with uh, 14 suckler cows and 12 calves to be sold at 12 months has a nitrogen value of 1198. So it's 14 multiplied by 65 and 12 multiplied by 24. So the reduction in that case, 5% uh, reduction is 60 kilos. So a couple of different options again here, reduce suckler cow numbers by one, which is 65 kilos over the, the full 12 month period. I stress that again. Or option two, sell five calves at six months rather than 12 months. So again, juggle it to whatever suits your own personal situation at home. So um, I brought up a couple of screen uh, shots of kind of ways to check out what your figures are. Now for farmers that are with ICBF, which is quite a large number, um, I just brought up the, the screen page here and just to show it will say, the opening page, just hit the login, which is which I've circled there in the red, just log in, um, pop in your username and password, whatever it is, um, to get into the main uh, line up there. If you kind of zoom across the ICBF banner on top there, you can see the word application. So you click on that. Um, and then you work your way down to the bean calculator. Now, don't worry if you can't keep up with me on the screen here. Um, Kean is recording this, and I presume it'll be up on YouTube along with all the other presentations. There's uh, six previous presentations. There's just some excellent information. So as I said, don't be worrying about keeping up with me, the speed I'm going at here. I just have a good few slides to get through. So click on Beam Calculator there. And what it does is it opens up uh, your figures um, for your particular farm. So I've highlighted a couple of things there in different colors. So down the bottom and the right hand circle there, and you can see it on the YouTube presentation afterwards, is the total figure for this particular farmer 
So this was the total figure that this particular farmer had in the reference period, which was from the 1st of July 18 to the 30th of June 2019, right? Now, I kind of move on up the screen there, you can see what is the live situation at the moment, right? So um, starting in July on the left hand side, moving your way across, you can see I have highlighted in a green box there, um, particular uh, boxes there. Now, those are the boxes that haven't been fully completed yet, as in the month isn't done. So the, the idea of this is it's a, it's a handy calculator. You can plug in whatever figures you want into them boxes. So what we'll say, if you decide that um, I'm going to get rid of a couple of cold cows, in January or February, or I have cows calving in February, March, I have six cows calving in February, six cows calving in March, you can plug in whatever figures you want in there and see how it, how it affects your total figure. Uh, also, then you can see how we'll say I have a lock of store cattle, I might sell a few of them. Um, if I reduce by 10, how it will affect my figures. So it's a, it's a handy thing to play around with and gives you an idea how we are going forward. Now, the next thing, the next slide on, um, basically um, just what I've done is I've pre-populated on the small uh, red circle there, this particular farmer's figures in the reference value. Um, so put in the figures and th it will automatically cal calculate for you what a 5% reduction for your farm is. And we'll say basically when you move across to, to the, the, the right hand side of the screen there, you'll see in green that this particular farmer, and I have to stretch in the lamps aren't the best, the production on the reference year uh, achievement is, in, is marked in green. So um, basically it's 6.74% in this particular case. So this farmer is fine. So it just, it gives you an idea where you stand, you know, that's for farmers with ICBF. Um, another system or a way of getting into it and find out what your figures are is to log into ag food. So a lot of farmers would be in ag food if you're dealing with movement permits or registering calves or doing a, a lot of that kind of work. So all you do is you log in on the, the home page again, your username, um, your password, your POC number, all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of farmers will be in the habit of using that. If the farmer doesn't use it, what we find in a lot of cases is there's a spouse or there's a son or a daughter that's quite good on computers and um, can use the, the system. So what you have to look for for your beam uh, information is exceptional aid measures down the bottom of the screen there. So it's kind of an unusual name. Uh, click on to applications, which I've highlighted in the red. And then on populate the, the little dot in the, in the, where I have it marked in red and view application. And it'll bring you up with a kind of a summary of figures. So um, this is a little bit more complicated in that it, it sort of, um, it gives the reference on the left and the target on the right. But what I'd advise anyone is to go into it and play around with it and get familiar with it. Um, so again, it'll tell you your 5% reduction target um, for what, whatever figures you have to reduce by. Um, now, just a couple of points to note, <coughs> excuse me, the organic nitrogen figures are historical and based on the previous 12 months. So the department didn't pick the figures from the sky. It's based on a historical of your individual farm. So uh, the information is really only a guide as to where the farm organic nitrogen is for the previous 12 months relative to the 2021 reduced target. So uh, and a few more points to note. Um, when the department do up the calculations for beam purposes, they use a daily organic nitrogen figure, but the, the beam calculators kind of work on a monthly average, right? So that's just important to note. At the end of a month, we'll say if you're selling or buying stock, it can throw your figure slightly. So herds with more fluid numbers, as in, you know, we'll be doing a lot of buying and selling, uh, maybe selling on stores, buying younger cattle, um, would just need to pay a little bit more attention and keep checking it. Um, if you want to know exactly where you stand today, and this is the thing I came up with kind of myself, is uh, look at your cattle cards. So what I do is I have three piles of cards. I have a pile of ca blue cards um, for not to one year olds, for one to two year olds, and a third pile for greater than um, two year olds. I multiply the total number of not to one year olds by 24. As of the day I'm looking at them, the, the one to two year olds, I multiply the total number of cards by 57 and any suckler cows or anything over two year old, 
uh, two years of age and multiply that figure by 65. Just add the three figures. And on that particular day, you get a figure and you can compare that then to your reference value. And it gives you an idea of where you stand. And it's the most accurate figure, figure you can have. Now, um, I hope I haven't bombarded you with too much information on that. The second part of my presentation is the organic farming scheme. So um, this is based on, uh, the first part is on existing organic farmers. So farmers who are currently in the scheme, right? So the Department of Agriculture have offered a one year extension up to the 31st of December, 2021, subject to the applicant's continued agreement to the governing scheme conditions. So. Um, the organic, a lot of it, well, all the organic farmers were due to finish the 31st of December this year, excuse me, this year, and they were offered a 12 month extension uh, to continue on within the scheme. Um, uh, the second point there on that um, screen, the contracts of the organic farming scheme participants who do not apply to extend their contract will cease on the 31st of December. And I'll explain how that happens in, in the next couple of slides. So. Bear in mind, you, there might be the odd organic farmer that doesn't want to continue in the scheme. That's their choice. If they do not apply to extend, they're out of the organic scheme. That's very important to note. So a um, couple of points to note here uh, on the organic farming scheme. In the event that you increase your organic area, we'll say next year, you get extra land, you will not receive an organic farming payment on any additional land. So the contract continues on the existing land you had in the contract now, but if someone offers you extra land or you come across or you're fortunate enough to be left a farm of land or something like that, you don't get payment organically on that new ground. Uh, you must have a valid organic license in place with your organic control body uh, to avail of the extension. And it's very, very important to not let your organic license lapse so if you need information on that, just contact your organic control body and they'll be glad to help you out. And just, um, as I said, don't let your license lapse. So um, the organic farming scheme, how to apply for the extension of the existing farmers. Um, this is different to gloss and I'll be covering gloss in a good bit of detail in a few minutes. Um, there's three methods with the organic farming scheme. The first one is uh, by text message by email and by registered post. And I'll go through each of them. Uh, the closing date for apply to this offer is the 31st of December, 2020, and no late applications will be accepted. So uh, if you haven't done already, um, get, on the, get on your bike and get the job done. Um, the better, the quicker you get this sort of stuff done, the better, you know. Um, the, the first method there by text message, um, an SMS text message will issue on the 14th of December asking if you wish to extend your organic farming scheme contract by one year, 12 months, with the option to reply DAFM space Y for yes and DAFM space N for no. And you will have 72 hours to, uh, from receipt of the text, SMS text, within which time you must reply. Your response will not be recorded if you do not reply during this 72-hour uh, period. Um, I kind of have to drive it home that it's very, very important that we'll say if you do get the text, you have to reply exactly DAFM space Y. If you just reply yes, or if you just reply Y, the text will not go through and you could be blocked from getting into the scheme. So um, that we have to be very, very exact on that. Um, try and reply within 72 hours. Um, the department are quite strict on that in that um, the, the, the text message will go defunct after that time. You know, by email is a second method for the organic farming scheme only, not for lost people. Uh, by email to organic at agriculture.gov.ie, advising that you wish to apply for an extension to your organic farming scheme contract. And just um, it's please enter our OFS uh, extension in the subject line, the email. They need to know um, that you want, and it's, it's also a record of you emailing them. So I, if you're emailing them, I would save that and keep a copy um, for yourself um, to prove that you actually emailed the organic section. The third method then is by registered post to the organic unit, Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine, Johnstone Castle Estate, County Wexford. And please note proof of registration should be retained. And anything that um, goes to the department, I always advise registered post. 
and you'll get a receipt. It might cost you five, six, eight euro, depending on the weight of the envelope. Um, but that's your proof and that will cover you to show that you did actually apply. There's always a few cases of post not going through, um, especially at this time of the year with Christmas post and parcels and things like that. Um, the closing date for reply to this offer again is the 31st of December 2020 and there'll be very, they'll be very, very strict and no late applications will be accepted. So if you can get it in as quick as you can and then you, once you have it in and submitted, you can forget about it. Um, just a little bit on the new organic scheme. So our, our new Green Minister, Pippa Hackett, announced a sizable increase in expenditure allocation for the organic sectors. So those already in the scheme can continue while she expects the funding to support between 400 and 500 more farmers to go organic in 2021. So this is not immediate. This will be at some stage in 2021. So, um, you know, there will be um, more applicants for the, the new scheme when it comes out. So just a couple of points to note. Um, there are currently no terms and conditions for the new scheme, right? So um, queries that are coming in, we cannot answer them because we don't have terms and conditions for the new scheme. In the previous scheme, just a little bit of information, um, and I want to thank you, our organic specialist, Elaine Levy, and my colleague um, in Ballymote here, Paul Rigney, for helping me provide this information. Um, it was a requirement to complete a 25-hour introduction to organic production course in the previous scheme. Now, I presume that will apply in the new scheme. We don't know, but something like that more than likely will be in the new scheme. So our Chagas organic specialists run these courses, but just to bear in mind, there is an open waiting list. So you might think if you ring up today, you'll get in tomorrow, just make contact and your name will be collected on the list and then you can complete your course. And this new organic scheme, terms and conditions details will be announced later in 2021. So that's for later in the year. Now, um, one of the, the topical things that's on the go now the last few days is the third part of my presentation, which is the glass rollover for glass one and glass two contracts. Now, just one and two, that's important to bear in mind. So um, the, the information packs uh, I hear are on the go. They've, they're starting to arrive in the post. So in relation to the extension of glass one and glass two contracts will be posted to relevant participants starting the week of the 14th of December, 2020. Some of them have started arriving, more will arrive uh, tomorrow, the day after, depending on local post. So glass three farmers are okay um, because they are still currently in the scheme. So they, they don't need an extension. Anyone in glass one and two uh, was due to finish their existing contract like the organic farmers on the 31st of December, 2020. Um, so that's the, hence the reason they get their rollover of 12 month contract. The glass three farmers started 12 months later. So they weren't due to finish the uh, glass three until the 31st of December, 2021 anyway. So they're okay. Right, a text message will issue on Wednesday, the, 20, the 16th of December, 2020. And I'll cover this in a few minutes. Um, We've been assured of this by the Department of Agriculture, as with any of these new things, there's always glitches in technology and things like that. So um, anyone, uh, well, most people, and I'll go through it now in a few minutes, will get text messages, not everyone, for glass one and glass two. So an extension to glass one and two contracts is being offered subject to the updated terms and conditions of the scheme uh, and updated scheme specifications. So. Excuse me, what the department have assured us is that they're going to, with the information pack, uh, it's going to contain uh, updated terms and conditions for both one and two. They are slightly different and also scheme specifications. So you'll be bombarded with lots of information. It's not open to new entrants. That's the thing to bear in mind, right? Um, very important point. Um, if a farmer wishes to avail of the offer, um, of the contract uh, would continue on the 1st of January 2021 and cease on the 31st of December 2021. So again, you just finish your existing one uh, on the 31st of December, you roll straight on in on the 1st of December and it'll run right up until the 31st of December 2021, right? That's if the farmer wishes to continue. If a farmer does not wish to continue and there will be a few cases of them, that's their choice, 
um, their contract then will complete this, uh, will, will, they will complete their scheme on the 31st of December 2020 and they're done and that's fine and that's their choice, right? Um, now, the contracts, so the application for extension will only be considered for those contracts which are valid and active as at the 31st of December 2020. Um, I, there's a bit of info, good bit of information in this slide here. So it's it's a thing that will affect some farmers. Now the loss of lease land, right? So the loss contract must be extended in its entirety unless, and this is the only situation, the participant or farmer is no longer in the control of land uh, out of their control, basically due to the expiry of land lease or rental agreement to which an action relates under his or her loss contract. So they lose, they have been leasing ground long-term for the previous scheme and out of their control will say they've lost it, right? Uh, contract with such land no longer farming, forming part of the participants annual basic payment scheme application in 2021. So it's land that would have been on the, the previous BPS applications which would match with the loss area and it comes off then in 2021 because they've lost it. That is the only scenario which the department have said uh, in which an action may be removed or dropped from extension. Everything else carries forward into the new, into the new um, extension. Now, existing payments will continue for the 12 month extension. So we have good news. Um, we're, we're like Santa Claus at Christmas, we're bringing gifts. Um, the 12 months will continue on and Polly, uh, Polly Martin will have good news on BDGP as well. Uh, submission of this claim is evidence of your ongoing ex acceptance of the last terms and conditions as updated. So by submitting the claim and putting in the application, you're agreeing to the last terms and conditions. And um, if you want to go through them, as I said, they'll be included in the information pack uh, that's to come out in the post. You, as with any scheme, you may be with the department, you may be selected for an on-the-spot inspection under the department's monitoring and control arrangement during the period of the extended contract. Uh, one thing that we are finding at the moment is there's a huge number of inspections on the go and we just uh, for glass and we just encourage anyone if you get an inspection contact your Chagas advisor or your ACA advisor as quick as possible just that we can help with the paperwork and there is a lot of paperwork to do with a glass inspection. Um, don't be leaving it to the very last minute because they do have deadlines for getting the information back and sometimes you have to chase after receipts and invoices and things like that and that does take a little bit of time. So, um, sorry, I digress. Uh, how to apply, right? The first method of applying is by text message. So a text message will be will issue to you if you wish to extend your last contract by one year. And towards the end of the presentation, I'll explain what to do for the people that don't get text messages, right? To extend your contract by one year with the option to reply D-A-F-M-Y, exactly the same as the organics people for yes or D-A-F-M space N for no. Again, you will have 72 hours from the receipt of the text within which you must reply. Very, very important. Please note that if you um, are replying DAFM space Y, again, you're accepting the terms and conditions of the scheme. Uh, well, if you'll have to do that if you want to get paid. A full copy of which is accessible on the department website. Now, it's essential that you follow the exact lettering of the text in the reply, including the space. You'll be annoyed by the amount of times I say that, but I have to keep stressing, it has to be D-A-F-M space Y if you want to get in. The second method is on agfoo.ie, right? So a screen will be provided in agfoo.ie where you may uh, apply for an, the extension of your glass contract for one year. You may apply yourself on ag food or an agent may do so on your behalf. Now I understand, I haven't got into the system uh, today in a while, but the department assured us that they would have it up uh, by this evening, uh, ready to go. Um, uh, so we'll just have to check it out and, and keep an eye on it. Uh, please ensure that agents associated with your account is or are appropriately authorized to act on your behalf in relation to the GLAS scheme. Uh, it's very, very important that whatever whoever is dealing with your GLAS um, application and details uh, may not be the same person who's dealing with your basic payment application that your glass is actually linked um, to your um, to your to your advisor will say that's very very important otherwise they cannot do anything for you they cannot apply on egg food the deadline for submission of the application is the 31st of December again we only found out about this a couple of days ago and um, the time scale is very very tight 
um, just encourage anyone to act on this if you want to go ahead with it. Uh, there's contact details there, and I, give, I will give them again at the end of the presentation. Um, there's an ag food email address, or there's a low call number there um, to call directly. And again, I have it at the end of the presentation. It's also on the letter of a, the letter that the information letter that you would have got uh, or will get in the next couple of days. Now, um, how to apply um, the, when when you're not with the text? So, not every farmer will receive a text message. So I've come up with the kind of the categories of farmers that don't. So some of the joint herd number farmers uh, will not receive a text message. So you could have a husband and wife team, or you could have a, a father and son or a father and daughter or a mother and son or whatever, two names on a herd number, for example. Some of those people will not get a text message. The same thing applies for partnerships, whether it be one, two or three people on a partnership, they may not get, some of them will, some of them won't. Yeah, again, the third point, uh, farmers with no mobile phones, there are a number of them. Um, obviously, if they don't have a phone, they can't get a text. Um, some mobile phone carriers do not carry uh, text messages. Some of them are not um, kind of linked to it. And also, there are a number of applicants who have previously opted out of the Department of Agriculture text service. So they won't receive um, the text message. Now, if that's the, situ the situation, then your application has to be made through Ag Food for your extension of class one and two. So either you do your Chagas or your ACA advisor to, um, to apply through Ag Food for you, or you can do it yourself, but you're ruled out of the text message uh, system. Now, uh, the, um, I'm kind of stressing this. So um, it's a very, very uh, important message. If you do not reply to the text uh, and also do not apply online, your GLOSS contract finishes. So it'll cease on the 31st of December, 2020. You're finished, you're gone. Um, and again, <laughs> this is, I'm saying this at nauseum, reply to the department text with D-A-F-M space Y, right? Um, there's a few uh, queries will say for, you know, if you have queries, again, um, there's the, 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 the email address there. There's a department website um, link. They, they, they're up, they're currently updating their website at the moment, um, but it'll be full of information um, on, the, on the actual, uh, the, the rollover from GLOSS 1 and GLOSS 2. Um, the above details, are, as I said, are also on the bottom of the information letter. So, um, that's uh, basically where the information is. So I know I'm after bombarding you all with lots of information on three different um, um, schemes there, sorry. Thanks for your attention. And I'm going to hand over to Polly Martin now to uh, continue on with um, his presentation. So I'll try and stop share this. How was that, Kian? Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, thanks very much for that, Brendan. Uh, so, Paul, you're up next if, if you're ready to share. I'll just, uh, just say it again there that they don't forget the question and answer function at the bottom of the screen there. Um, we usually run this webinar for an hour, but given the, the importance of this, we can run slightly over just to answer any questions. So don't be afraid to send in your questions there and we'll try to answer as many as possible towards the end. Paul, uh, whenever you're ready there, you can go ahead. Thanks. Uh, you can see my presentation there, can you? Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. That's okay. Right. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Morton. I, I'm a livestock advisor here, uh, along with Brendan here in, ba in uh, Ballymore, Sligo. And this evening, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Beef Data and Genomic Program, commonly known as BDGP. And I'd also cover the sheep well for scheme. Um, I suppose the good news to start off is with, uh, be with the Beef Data Genomics Program is uh, current participants is that payments are, have been uh, authorized and it should be hitting your uh, accounts um, later this week so um, that's the start so um, Minister Charlie McConnor Logue and the department have recently announced that the government has provided funding in next year's budget to allow for the beef data and genomic program from BDGP to be extended for a rollover period of one year into 2021. Uh, this extension is open to those BDGP participants who have already met the uh, requirements for the full six-year duration of BDGP 2015 to 2020. So, there, so this is to the participants who have met the 50% requirement on the female side and, bull, and, on the and on the bull side, either for the stock bull or AI. 
out is a number of participants who may have um, fallen short of the requirements and I will address uh, those, uh, that query um, later on in the presentation. So the Beef Data Genomics Program, um, so this is a one year extension of the BDGP with the majority of obligations remaining unchanged. So applicants are still required to have a beef breed animal born in the herd between the 1st of July 2020 and the 30th of June 2021. They must also complete and submit collection, uh, surveys, forms, court record keeping and event recording. So that's your uh, recording the, uh, your calf within 27 days, recording uh, the, the, ice, the eye code or the, or the bull tag number of the, of the animal, of the calf that's born. Uh, other service including uh, docility service for the first and functionality for your stock bull. Uh, your cow, your uh, cow's milking ability as well. So address uh, and them service can, uh, can be filled out either in the paper form or online on ICBF, if you have an ICBF account. Um, you need to update your Carbon Navigator annually and that will need to be completed before the 30th, 30th of September uh, 2020. Uh, submit uh, genomic tissues sampling from 60% of your reference animals. So your reference animals remains the same as what as was in the previous uh, scheme. So if you had, uh, so it's, 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 it remains the same. The female replacement strategy then. Um, so this is the number of heifers or as with suckler cows meeting the female requirement required on the holding on the 31st of October must be equivalent to 50% of the applicant's reference animals. So, as a, so if your if your applicant's reference was thirty animals uh, previously, fifty percent again needs to be uh, fifteen uh, uh, females, um, and these females must be over uh, sixteen months of age on the thirty first of October twenty twenty one. The stock bull requirement or slash AI requirement. So for applicants using the stock bull, at least one. Stock bull on the holding on the 30th of June 2021 must have a genotype four or five star of either the terminal or replacement index on or across the breeds. And I covered uh, the values there later on at the time of purchase to be deemed eligible in your herd. So the bull must be genotyped and must have the tag or a sample submitted. So any applicant renting or leasing a bull for the purpose of breeding must use the bull bulls that are four or five star on terminal replacement index. So applicants availing of this option must inform the Department of Agriculture uh, on the use of such bulls. And all pre-movements uh, of the bulls for breeding between holdings must be notified on the AI, AIM systems. So uh, the bull will need to be within a uh, test for TB and uh, uh, before go going and coming back between them. For those applicants which are using uh, AI, at least 80% of the AI used in the participants in holding must be four, a four or five star, again, on terminal or, or replacement. For those then that are using both the stock bull and AI, um, they must be compliant on both requirements. So some farmers may be may, may predominantly be using the stock bull and then using a small bit of AI, maybe for breeding the replacements. They, that AI must, uh, must be uh, four or five star. So if an applicant is deemed to be non-compliant with the replacement strategies, so that's both uh, on the female and on the, and on the male side, that applicant will be removed from the program without payment. So they won't be paid. So, it's, so just to reiterate that, it's uh, the 50% for the females and uh, the stock pull then are 80%. Uh, moving on then, this, the success of the scheme uh, pre what can be seen and what we're seeing uh, from, pre from information gathered. Uh, so since 2014, uh, we can see there on, uh, right, so for the first calve, for females there, first calve in heifers, um, it has improved from, and the average price of a calf has improved from 70 euro above the average to uh, just over 90 euro in 2018, between two years. Um, the improvements then, where we can see per, uh, cows 
per cow per year has improved from 0.81 to 0.86 to, for, in, in 2018. And the calving interval has, in, has improved by just over 11 days. And we're seeing a greater number of females over uh, calving at, 20, uh, at 24 months, which is great to see. The slaughter performance then, from, this is from suckler based steers. So the difference there between 2014 and 2018, we're seeing an extra eight kilos of beef being, uh, being produced. Uh, the carcass confirmation has remained relatively the same at our equals. But they had to slaughter, we're seeing over a month uh, earlier, these steers being, being slaughtered, and that's fundamentally down to the success of the scheme. Now, just uh, these, uh, so on the replacement index, so for an animal to reach that four stars, so that's across the breeds, the animal will need to be, uh, nine, will need to have a, a euro star value of 90 euro. Um, that's for crossbred cows, uh, and then for pedigree animals, if you just go down here, you can see, and that information is available on the ICBF website. Then for the terminal, then on the terminal side, a four-star animal across the breed needs to be 110 euro. So if you're using a crossbred bull, it needs to be 110 euro. Whereas the pedigree bulls then, so if we went for an Angus bull, it had to be 68 euro. Or a cemental a Charlie there, 132, or a cemental 81 euro. So the bulls, so that's for your either for your stock bull or area. The evaluation then the next evaluation will be uh, with publication of these figures will be coming in uh, January uh, 21, so it's the 26th of January. Um, the, the deadline has passed there for submitting information there. But for the March evaluation there, the, the last day for submitting uh, genotypes there is the 30th of December, and for recording service there is the 29th of January. And going forward, there'll be another evaluation then in uh, May. So if you if you just take. moving on then to how to apply for the scheme. So similar enough to uh, the glass scheme as as Brendan was, was talking previously there. So the, the either can apply on the Ag Food uh, website, which are, uh, or by text message. Now the closing date for receipt of applications is 5 p.m. on the 15th of January, 21. The scheme, uh, the terms and conditions of the scheme have been launched and uh, they're, avail they're available on the Ag Food website if you want to look. So on agfood.ie, so a screen will be provided in agfood where you may apply to extend your BDGP participation for one year. You may either uh, apply yourself or, or, or ask an agent um, to act on your behalf. So please, again, as what Brenda was saying with the class, please ensure that the agent associated with your account is appropriately authorised to act on your behalf. And as I said, the deadline there for application is the 15th of January. Um, set up an Ag Food account, uh, contact Ag Food, Ag Food, or local the number there. Oh, the text message there, um, just if they're receiving um, no more than the, the glass there for the text message, it'll be, it'll be sent out uh, to participants to continue. But that uh, text message, uh, you'll be given 72 hours to reply to it. So uh, we just, we're waiting on confirmation there. We don't think that message is going to, is going is is being sent out this week. We're thinking it'll be early next week when that message be sent out. Not to confuse farmers like yourselves uh, with the glass scheme. So an SMS will issue to you asking if you wish to extend your BDB, BDGP participation by one year, with the option to reply DAFM space Y for yes or DAFM space N for no. And as as Brendan said previous, um, that uh, that space that DAFM space letter Y is very important. So as this, uh, you will have three days uh, from the receipt of SMS to reply. And the full terms and conditions can be found on the department's website. Now, uh, just a very important uh, slide here, uh, the right to review. For the, so this is uh, for the participants in, in, in the BGP scheme who, do, who did not meet the requirements. And they may um, seek a review there if they, if they wish to participate again. 
going forward. So it's easier for the farmers who haven't met the 50% requirement on the females or on, or on the male side. So your request for review should outline the reasons why you consider that you should be eligible to apply for a further year BDGP. If there are circumstances outside your control which you believe prevents you from meeting these requirements at the time, you should seek a review and give, and give details. So this reply must be submitted um, by Friday the 8th of January 2021, so it needs to be, and you need to enclose uh, any support and documentation you consider relevant to the matter. So that uh, uh, appeal needs to be sent by registered post, and that review request uh, can be sent to the address there, so Sharon O'Connor, Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine Government Buildings, Old Abilix Road, Port Leach, County Leach, and that needs to be sent by registered post. So that would want to be sent on the Thursday, the 7th of January 21, at the latest. So for further information there, so if you have any queries on tissue tag stockholds eligibility or any other breeding aspects of BDGP, uh, please contact ICBF or email them. Uh, the terms and conditions are live now on the Department of Agriculture uh, website, so www.agriculture.gov.ie. And any queries regarding the BGGP scheme can be can be made to the department there on 076-106-4423 uh, or bschemes at agriculture.gov.ie. And that bschemes at agriculture.gov.ie can be used for any beef scheme. Um, so it can be used there for, for participants there in uh, BEAM as well, if they have any inquiries. So moving on then, um, the sheep welfare scheme. Again, this scheme has been given the green light for 2021. So eligibility criteria there. So participants in this scheme must have an active herd number or flock number. Uh, they must submit a BPS application for, for the scheme year and comply with, with the active farmers requirement under the regulations. So that's basically percent, uh, submitting your BPS. Uh, you need to submit a sheep census in respect of 2020. So that census form will be arriving in the post in the next uh, number of days. And that's taken on the 31st of December 2020. And that uh, census needs to be returned by either by, res by post uh, by Friday the 29th of January 21. Or if you're filling it out online, that needs to be uh, the online census is Friday the 12th of February 21. Um, there is provision under the scheme for new entrants and those returning to sheep farming. So to continue, so continuation in the scheme, so existing eligible participants in the sheep welfare scheme will automatically be enrolled in the 2021 scheme. Now, should an applicant not wish to remain in the scheme, they should advise the department in writing of this as soon as possible. So they need to contact the sheep welfare scheme, uh, section in the department of agriculture and I will provide the details. Um, please note that should an applicant opt out of the scheme, it will not be possible to rejoin the scheme. And where an applicant remains in the scheme, the participant is agreeing to comply with the terms and conditions of the scheme for the, for the coming year. And that them terms and conditions are available on the department website and it will be posted out to two as well. As it says, there is a uh, the option for new entrants. So for the purpose of the scheme, a new entrant to the scheme is defined as an applicant who has applied for a new herd number from the 1st of January and prior to the 31st of December. Or an applicant with an existing herd number who has not held or traded in sheep for two years period up to the 31st of October 2020. Um, these uh, new entrants, they, uh, they will also need to inform the department of the number of breeding females they have as well. So they need to, um, make, uh, to make, they will need to uh, make the department, the sheep welfare scheme uh, aware of the number of females they have, because they will not be filling out a, sh a sheep census. Um, an application for the sheep welfare scheme is made by completing the relevant application form and returning it to the address provided before the, the specified closing date of the 31st of January 20, uh, that's be 2021. Um, new entrants should contact the sheep welfare section of the department to request an application form. Uh, the eligible breeding yo number, so this is your reference number. So the number of yo's eligible for payment under the scheme will be the average number of yo's from their 2014 and 2015 sheep, sheep census. So this will be known as your uh, scheme reference number. 
Uh, so farmers there, if if the lower number of breeding ewes is returned on a subsequent census form, including uh, 2020, then the this lower number will be the basis of deferred payment. And farmers will need, if you are if they are going up in, if you're going down in numbers or going up in numbers, you will need to um, inform the department um, of that. Uh, this where higher uh, higher numbers are returned, the reference numbers cannot be exceeded. So. This is except where um, farmers must increase stock under the gloss scheme requirements. So maybe a gloss action there that requires to keep extra to keep extra sheep. Uh, the scheme actions then the flocks types they're broken down into uh, lowland flocks and hill flocks, and uh, the farmers must select um, an option from category A and category B. Um, these. Uh, these actions are, are same to previous years. So if we take lameness control there, um, a farmer must carry out uh, five lameness assessments in the year. So this is typically once between lambing, between mating and lambing, again, uh, possibly at lambing, uh, May, June time, uh, when you're given a dose, uh, July, August at flock assembly, and again, prior to mating. And you need to require the percentage of lameness in the flock. Uh, mineral supplementation there um, for yews that needs to be given. Uh, that's uh, post mating, so that's 60 days post mating. You need to provide uh, the yews with um, with minerals, and you need to record the date of, of ram turnout. So these minerals can take the form of bagged mineral feedstuff, so that'd be dry minerals, uh, mineral blocks, drenches, and liquid minerals, and uh, injectables, boluses, or they can be included in compound feedstuff. And you must uh, use uh, minerals in accordance with manufacturers and shops, and this must work, receipts must be kept. Uh, parasite control there. Um, this is where you take a fecal egg count there. Um, so for a lowland flock, there needs to be two fecal egg counts taken. Um, that's uh, the fecal egg counts needs to be taken in. We between the first of June twenty one and the thirst to thirty to September twenty one to establish Wernberg. And you must record amplimintic um, use in your action records book. Uh, scanning then uh, it is uh, scanning then yeah, is is six is seventy to one hundred days post RAM turnout you can scan. You need to record your scanning results and retain scanning receipt from your scanner. And you need to record the treatment of different groups of yews per litter size and lambing dates. So, what uh, what actions you took? Uh, hill flocks uh, is similar with the mineral supplementation for the yews post mating and for the scanning. Um, and just there, uh, the meal feeding there to lambs post weaning. And the uh, hill flocks cannot, uh, they may not uh, choose both mineral supplementations of lambs. And meal feeding and lambs post week. So it's either one or the other. You need to, to, to pick. Um, the scheme action book. So the scheme action book will be supplied to all applicants. Um, so this, will, this uh, should be arriving in February, the first week of February. Uh, scheme participants must record all compliance actions for their chosen actions in the action book and retain all relevant receipts and documentation. So the scheme action book is, is, is essentially the verification that uh, tasks have been carried out. Schemes action record book must uh, must be made available on inspection or on request from administrative rules. And failure to produce the scheme action book will result in no payment and an administrative penalty. So inspections, um, so like all schemes, there is inspections and, and administrative controls. So there will be an on-farm inspections under the scheme to verify scheme compliance and recording of compliance actions taken in the scheme action book. So there will also be administrative checks of the scheme action book and associated documents and receipts uh, needs to be kept to prove uh, scheme compliance. Uh, inspections there will generally be notified 48 hours. Uh, pre inspection the applicant will be informed and, sh and sheep will be have to be paying for inspection. So this is so the, uh, the the inspector can count the number of yews and they can uh, cross check uh, tag numbers and uh, so for further information um, 
you can contact uh, the Sheep Rail for Scheme by post. Uh, so it's the Sheep Rail for Scheme, again, Scarfage Culture Food and Marine in Port Leash. Can, can be contacted uh, by phone there on 076-106-4420 or email uh, sheepschemes at agriculture.gov.ie. I'd like to thank you for your, um, I'd like to thank you and uh, I'm open to any questions you may have. Okay, thanks very much, Paul. Um, if you want to stop sharing there, and um, I'll ask Brendan then to turn on his camera as well. We'll try and get to some of these questions, but then quite a few questions have come in. Um, so let me see, we'll start with this. A number of queries have come in, either of you can comment on this, about can people enter or join up with these various schemes we're covering tonight if they are not existing members? participants of the scheme. I'll just answer that first. Um, I, uh, for the sheep welfare scheme, yes, and the scheme is open there for new participants. Um, but I don't think I did mention it there for the BDGP. Um, it is not open to new participants, unfortunately. The same gloss as well. Gl uh, yeah, gloss. Um, basically, it's for existing people only. Uh, Kian, uh, the organic scheme is for the existing people only. As I said, Pippa Hackett has a kind of announced that there will be a new organic scheme in the future within the year coming forward. But they, there's no terms and conditions to get into that scheme yet. BDGP has run. Uh, it's 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 it, it's a standalone scheme. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, just uh, similar to that, people are with a couple of queries then about adding an action on loss or deleting an action. Can yeah, the, 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 the contract is a kind of a continuation of the existing contract. Uh, so you cannot really add in new actions. And the only real action you can drop is based on the loss of lease land. Now, the only thing that I'd sort of uh, raise the issue is that a lot of the, this stuff is very, very new. Uh, the terms and conditions and, and, and details are only just on the go at the minute. So um, things are, are very, very fluid, as the man says, you know. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. Um, let me see now. Just can you, uh, for anyone that came along late, uh, uh, Brendan, there was one or two queries there on where people can access the calculator for Beam for themselves. Yeah, the, um, the ICBF one, if you're a member of ICBF, that's one. Um, the second one will say the, the Department of Agriculture give you the kind of the figures, um, we'll say, as, as points in time. Chagas have a kind of a, a similar calculator to the ICBF one. So if you want to contact your Chagas advisor, and I would presume the ACA have a, 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 another version of that. But it's important that you get accurate figures in. Like you can come up with, a, we'll say, a, a calculator, but you must put in accurate figures or, or else you'll get um, poor figures out, you know. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, let me see now. A, a number of queries have come in then regarding a, a replacement for gloss or people who were in AOS or something like that. And I think maybe the only thing we can say is that it was referred to in the budget that there may be something coming down the line, but there's absolutely nothing in black and white at this stage. Um, yeah, um, there has been sort of talk about it, but I, I would only kind of comment on that when I see terms and conditions in front of me, um, just to be concrete about it, you know. Sure, sure. It's a straightforward enough question here. Do you get an inspection when you finish loss? Well, I know from previous schemes, you can actually technically be inspected for a period of time after the scheme finishes. That has always been the case for, for a number of previous schemes. So technically you could um, for a period of time after the end of the scheme. But the, the, we'll say the rollover into the new scheme is, is, is really a continuation of the, the existing scheme. That's the way to see it, to look at it. Yeah. Just a, a, another query there again. Somebody's asked if they reply to their text message to check it, can they go in then uh, their glass application? If they go into Ag Food, then can they make can they double check that it's there? That it's there? I'd I'd have to check on that one because I know the Department of Agriculture were actually working on that today. Um, so I haven't to be to be honest with you, I haven't put one through to see. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have yourself key yeah, in or just Paul. To, my understanding is that it, it should be there on the system. And again, as you said, the, the, the situation is quite fluid and that if they contact their planner directly or their consultant, that they'll be able to double check that for them anyhow. Yeah. Um, let me see. The next question then was uh, beam. Um, can somebody, does it affect their figures if their holding has increased in size? Um, well, the, the, the beam calculations were based on previous figures. So as I said in my presentation, you cannot dilute down the nitrates by an increase in land, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah so based on a solid it, figure on the... Yeah, it, it's going back to, um, we'll say 2018, 2019, back previous figures, you know, so um, yeah, it cannot be changed. Um, Paul, just to mention there, can you be penalised for having more sheep on your census, census than your reference number? Uh, no, that, not that I'm aware of. Um, your ref, you'll, you'll only be paid on the reference number of animals um, when you first applied for the sheep welfare scheme. So if it was 100 uh, breeding sheep that you had uh, at, when you first applied, that's what you'd be paid on. Hmm. That's perfect. That's one. perfect, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Brendan there, uh, can you just make a comment on those who are hanging on to uh, animals to qualify for the genomics? So they wanted to make their 50% of heifers. Yeah. Um, can you just make a comment there? Those people yeah, yeah, there's no problem. A lot, of, a lot of farmers are in both schemes, which is perfectly normal. And what a lot of farmers would have done is they kept on heifers, we'll say four and five star heifers, as Paul was talking about to hit their 60% target, we'll say, for cows and replacement heifers for the 31st of October, a magic day, as we call it. And what they've done is, is any of the lesser stock or maybe older four or five star cows or whatever, then they, re they waited to get the payment guaranteed for that scheme and then reduce the numbers down then afterwards, which will tie in with the, uh, the beam scheme. So you can, it, you can juggle the two together. You know, yeah. so it is possible, yeah. So just, it just um, again, there have been a number of queries then with regard to the, the management of the scheme. Now, I'm just going to comment on this briefly. The management of the contract as opposed to the five years that you're in and the one year that you're going into mm -hmm. and how that will be managed regards inspections and subsequent penalties or the duration or how long money will claw back. And uh, I think that that is too specific a thing to answer here tonight and that over the coming weeks is that that will be clarified and people can contact their planner directly and they will outline the details for them on that. Just I, I another query came in there that I, I just, I, I went to answer it online. So I just wanted to query there. Somebody asked, can you be in the environmental scheme and organic? Uh, and I know certainly under glass, that wasn't a problem, but you couldn't draw a double payment mm. on the one area. So you had Ye to opt for... Yeah. You could you could be in both, but just you wouldn't get paid for low input permanent pasture and draw down the organic grassland payment. Um, now there was no problem with the two being in the two schemes, but mm. in that particular case, what most people did was they they drew down the organic payment and they may have gone for something like um, planting of a hedge or fencing off watercourses or we'll say birds, bees, bat boxes and maximise the other areas. Sure. But you couldn't get dual payment because it's classed as being the same. Um, the same, uh, how would you describe it? The same type of ground mm. in two schemes. Yeah, yeah. I think that that that's perfect. That's perfect, Brendan. Listen, we're running on. We ran at close to fifteen minutes over tonight. Um, I hope we covered most of the questions. I have a list of them written down. I think we got through about a dozen or so questions there. Mm. Um, that's it for this evening. And um, there's been an awful lot of information there, important information. So we hope you made some note of a few little points that might have been relevant to you. If not. The webinars, all of the webinars in the series are available on the YouTube channel, and this webinar will be made available on our own YouTube channel, Chagas Sligo Leitrim Donegal. This will be made available tomorrow. Next week's webinar will be actually a rerun of the Transferring the Family Farm Clinic from the 17th of November. Now, that webinar was watched by over 1,500 people live that night, and there were loads of... Uh, bits of vital information there with regard to succession, inheritance, taxation, and so on. 
And again, you will find details uh, by following Chagask SLD, Sligo Leitrim Donegal, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, it will run again as usual, uh, eight o'clock next Tuesday night on the same link as we have been using. So you should be able to access it again. That's it for this evening. And remember, despite the current restrictions, you can always contact your Chagask advisor on uh, email, phone, and by text. Thanks for joining us and good night. Good night. Good night.